Hey guys, Andrew Shrout, I'm here on the sideboard. I'm sitting with Aaron Barish. How's it going, Aaron? It's going great, Trout. It is going great for you. You have started 8-0 in this tournament, just slice right through it with a deck that we haven't seen a lot of before. You're playing Abs and Aggro. Right. So tell me a little about why you chose to play this deck and how you arrived at this particular configuration. Well, I decided to play Abs and Aggro because I wanted to play an aggro deck in the current format as it is, with cards being so powerful. Mm -hmm. You the best way to beat people is instead of playing your own powerful card, just make sure your opponent ever get a chance to cast theirs. Sure. Just go under them as easy as possible. And the creatures in standard at like the one and two drop slot are really bad outside of green and white. Okay. Because uh, in green and white, you get like Soldier of the Pantheon and Fleece Main Lion, and the other colors really don't have things that kind of match up to that. Sure. So I want to play a green white aggro deck, and the best cards to go with that, the only wedge that we have is Abzan. Sure. So. Okay, fair enough. So the, the Abzan aggro deck, uh, there is kind of a, a pedigree with this. Like Mike Seegers played it to the top four of the Pro Tour. Right. Uh, he's the guy that kind of put the Anafenza style on the map. Mm -hmm. Your version is geared even lower. You, you brought up Soldier of the Pantheon. That, that to me is like the deck, the, the package that really sets this deck apart, I think. Uh, you have four Bloodsoak Champion and four Soldier of the Pantheon. So tell me a, a little bit about these one drops and how they've been for you. Right. The, playing Abzan Aggro right now in standard, if you're playing the, they're, most lists are playing five drops like Wingmate Rock and they're playing more lands. Right. However, cards like that aren't good when you're playing to so try and go into your opponent because you're playing five drops, but your opponent's cards are still going to be better than yours because they're still that much slower than you. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing eight one drops, you're able to go into your opponent a little better. And really, the reason the other lists don't play the eight one drops is because they don't have as well of a, a suite to support them, which okay. this deck has. All right. So the rest of your the rest of your threats are kind of the same threats we've seen in the Abs and Aggro decks, of course. Fleece Main Lion, Air of the Wild, Drixasha Death Dealer, Anafenza. Uh, Siege Rhino, you can't leave home without those if you're playing Absent. Uh, you do have two Boon Seder, which is a card that I, I think has kind of fallen off of a lot of people's radar in these kind of like white greenish aggro decks. How's that been for you? Right. Boon Seder is, he's not fantastic, okay. but he's a role player. Really, like a three mana 4 2, there's a lot of magma sprays and magma jets going around and a lot of cheap removal for him. Mm -hmm. So he really isn't the best kind of three drop you've been wanting in these right. decks. And that's why people have been playing the uh, Herald of Torment. Herald of Torment. Yeah. See, Plus, Herald Torment lets you fly over Elspeth and things like that. But in this deck, Boon Seder is more important because, unlike most Abzan Aggro lists, I'm playing four Air of the Wilds. Mm -hmm. A lot play two and four Rakshasa Death Dealers. Right. And also, this deck plays a lot more green sources okay. than most lists. A lot of them are playing a lot of uh, black sources, or they play two Urborgs to try and support a bunch of double black cards. Gotcha. And I'm not doing that. Okay. I decide to stick more to green-white. All right, so just kind of consolidate the mana. So. Boon Seder is an instant speed pump spell, right. but it is not the only instant speed pump spell in this deck. You actually have a ton of them. Uh, one that you made a big splash with on camera. You have three Gather Courage. And I know you, you were very excited to play that card. And then, of course, one Become Immense, and then four Abs and Charm. So actually, uh, counting the, the Boon Seders, ten pump spells in the main deck. So tell me a little about Gather Courage in particular and how the pump spells have worked out for you. So this is really the only way to play an aggro deck right now. Yep. All the aggro decks in standard are playing a lot of pump spells, whether it be Titan Strengths or something of that nature, because our creatures right now are so good at blocking, mm -hmm. and people are playing a lot of creatures to sign slow down aggro decks. That's, that's how people were planning to stop the decks. So pump spells really help break through a lot of the threats in standard. Um, the one of Become Immense, it's a really, really powerful card that a lot of people sure. do not, they don't give it the credit for. It's a really hard card to play around. Mm -hmm. I mean. Sometimes you just die to plus six, plus six. No, sure. one, you can't do much about it. But the real star is Gather Courage. Right. That is a card that I found when I was gather searching one day. I was just looking to build, I was looking for sweet things to play in standard. I stumbled upon that. And right now in standard, all of our two mana removal, yep. uh, Bile Blights, Lightning Strikes, Magma Jets, right. they all require your opponent's toughness to be three or less. Okay. This is so different from last standard where Doom Blades and Ultimate Price were running them up. So, on turn two, if you play a two-drop creature, mm -hmm. all your two drops in the deck are green. All right. So if your opponent on their turn with their two mana tries to kill your guy, your gather courage is a free tempo gain by just protecting and saving your die. Because uh, standard's so tempo based right now, it's all about putting guys in play or copying your opponent from doing so and just sure. getting ahead. All right. So gather courage is really great at that. So if they, if they spend like their their turn two trying to keep your turn two off the board, you basically get to stop them from doing that for free. So it's kind of like a time walk in that sense. In a sense, yes. Okay, that seems seems pretty reasonable. Uh, that's a card that has been not been on anybody's radar at all. I don't think. Not really. I haven't seen anyone play it, but, but you have done some pretty good work with it. Uh, the rounding out your main deck, you have the one Soren Solemn Visitor, and you have two more of that card on the board. 
along with four thought seas. You mentioned that like you kind of gear up a little and become a little more mid-rangey post board. Tell me a little about that plan. So against a lot of the decks in standard, they're packing uh, Drown and Sorrows, all the Abzan decks. Mm -hmm. So in those matchups, your one drops aren't very good, even with Gather Courage. Right. Because Gather Courage is only going to save one guy from the Drown and Sorrow, from sure. the Anger of the Gods, whatever they're playing. Mm -hmm. So the best way to beat those decks is to kind of cut either all your soldiers or all eight of your one drops and kind of turn into a little bit of a slower deck with Sorens and Thought Seizes to kind of bring them down to your level, slow them down a little sure. bit, and then make their Drown and Sorrows bad. Okay. So you make them have dead cards, so your cards, so you have more card advantage over them in a sense. Gotcha. All right, let's talk a little bit about your matchups. What are you hoping to play against when you're playing this style of deck? This deck is really like well-rounded. It doesn't okay. have any like fantastic matchups, okay. but it can beat anything. Uh, it's really powerful. All right. Like the mana's a little finicky because you're a three-color aggro deck. You want to play all your lands untapped, and that's really hard to do. Okay. So, the mainly the decks you you're okay against everything, but the decks you don't want to play are really the Hornet Queen decks, gotcha. uh, like Whip Hornet Queen decks, Sadisi okay. Whip. Those decks are really hard to beat. This deck cannot ever beat a Hornet Queen. Sure. All right. Just decks that gum up the, the ground and just produce infinite blockers. I right. Guess. Elspeth, Hornet Queen, those cards are really hard to beat. Hornet's Nest, like the red-green monsters decks that are playing Hornet's Nest, those yeah. can be rough if they play that card. Okay. But other than that, I feel like my cards match up fairly well against all sure. my opponents. All right. So, so basically your plan against those kind of cards is just to win the game before they show up, right? Hopefully. <laughs> Seems like it's worked out for you so far. Again, you, I mentioned you started 8-0. So I take it you have not been Hornet Queen yet. I have not, All fortunately. Right. How, how's your tournament gone so far? I mean, I mean, no, so it's been going pretty good. I've played against a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, I did play against the Red Green Monsters deck on camera against uh, Anthony Lowry. Yep. I got kind of fortunate. He got mana screwed two games. I mean, I feel like I had good hands, so I might have been able to beat him anyway, but we, you we were made proactive. it, we made that, it that's clean. That's what the deck's trying to do, right? Right. Um, but I've played against pretty much every other right. Tier 1 deck in Standard at least once, Jeskai, Abzan. So. Sweet. We've well, definitely made some noise, and you've got people's attention. So I, I believe you have locked up the top eight. It's hard to say because we don't know if you're going to be able to draw in or not, but I'm going to go ahead and say good luck in the top eight. Thank Thanks you very much, Trout. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sitting down with me. Stick around. We've got plenty more coverage coming of the Standard Open here in Richmond.